the counter current multiplier system is a function of the loop of henle it is required to form a concentrated urine urine is more concentrated when a person is deprived of water or the person drinks very little water and a small volume of concentrated urine needs to be excreted body needs to conserve water it requires a high level of adh adh increases water reabsorption from the lead distal tubule and collecting duct from the principal cell for adh to function effectively a high osmolarity of the renal medullary interstitial fluid is required meaning thereby there should be a high solute concentration in the renal medullary interstitium a high solute concentration is a high sodium level in the renal medullary interstitium this high solute concentration enables water reabsorption in the presence of a high level of adh it drives water reabsorption in the presence of high level of adh and this solute concentration is created by the counter current multiplier system of the loop of henle by the counter current multiplier system of the loop of henle so the counter current mechanism which has the counter current multiplier system and the counter current exchange system of the vasa recta prevents this high solute concentration from being lost otherwise it would be without the counter current exchange all the solutes would be washed away in the blood flow following are the steps of the counter current multiplier system i'm drawing a loop of henle it has a thin descending limb the loop and a thick ascending limb step 1 is a hypothetical step it is assumed that step 1 occurs to build up this model of the counter current multiplier system in step 1 there is flow of isosmotic fluid from the proximal tubule into the loop of henle please remember that the fluid at the end of the proximal tubule is isosmotic it is so because in the proximal tubule equal concentration of solutes and water are reabsorbed so the fluid at the end of the proximal tubule is isosmotic so the solute concentration in the descending thin limb is 300 millimoles per liter in the thick ascending limb it is 300 millimoles per liter and in the medullary interstitium also it is 300 millimoles per liter then in step 2 there is involvement of the there is the role of the thick ascending limb of the loop of henle the thick ascending limb is freely permeable to solutes but impermeable to water so it pumps out solutes mediated by the basolateral sodium potassium atps pump and the apical sodium potassium two chloride symporter one may think that by pumping out solutes of the thick ascending limb why is not one able to create a hyperosmotic medullary interstitium at one go that is from 300 why can not one raise it to 600 or 900 or 1200 millimoles per liter this is because this is the most important point of this counter current system is that there is a limit of 200 millimoles to the osmotic gradient which the thick ascending limb can create so it can create a difference of only 200 millimoles per liter so now in the thick ascending limb it is 200 millimoles per liter in the medullary interstitium it is 400 millimoles per liter and in the descending thin limb it is 300 millimoles per liter in step 3 there is equilibrium between the descending thin limb and the medullary interstitium 
In step 3, there is equilibrium between the descending thin limb and the medullary interstitium. The descending thin limb is like a sieve, it is like a fishnet. So, it allows water to pass through but not allowing solutes to pass. As a result, in the descending thin limb, there, uh, the osmolarity is 400 milliosmoles per liter while it is 200 milliosmoles per liter in the thick ascending limb and uh, 400 milliosmoles per liter in the medullary interstitial. So, now the medullary interstitial osmolarity has increased from 300 to 400 milliosmoles per liter. These steps are repeated again and again. So, from 400, there will be 500, 600 and so on until 1200 milliosmoles per liter of whatever is required is reached. Thus, there is repetition of steps 1 to 3 over and over again. There is an incremental increase in the osmolarity of the medullary interstitium. Please remember that the thick ascending limb is capable of creating only a 200 milliosmoles per litre concentration gradient. So the countercurrent multiplier mechanism is required to form a concentrated urine to establish a high osmolarity in the medullary interstitium which enables water reabsorption in the presence of ADH. It is, uh, there are three steps. One, the first step is flow of water from the proximal tibial into the loop of Henle. Second step is active transport of solutes out of the thick ascending limb of the loop of Henle and third step is equilibrium between the descending thin limb and the medullary interstitium. So, in an incremental fashion, a high osmolarity of the renal medullary interstitium is created and this enables water reabsorption to, present, uh, to occur in the presence of ADH. Thank you for watching my video. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel and have a good day.